evening, everybody. Welcome to the Selectman's meeting for Monday, August 22nd, 2016 at 7.15 p.m. Uh, first on our agenda is the, the 2016 FY overview. We have our comptroller, Richard Visquet, here with us. Um, Mr. Visquet, or Mr. Absolutely. Town Manager? No, no, please. Good to see you. Hey, good evening. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I just wanted to come before you and give you a brief update on fiscal year 2016. Um, happy to say it's been one year since I was hired on August 17th. So uh, wow. thank you very much. Uh, appreciate it and uh, loving the job. Thank you. But um, so just a brief overview. We are in the process of doing our fiscal year 16 audit. As you know, our 15 audit was completed when I started. We had our, our review of that audit and now they've come back and audited fiscal year 16 and I'll have some more information with regard to that come uh, September meeting. I should have a little more detail, but everything's going well. I hope there's nothing um, that is too concerning, but just making sure that everything is um, ticking and tying and that we're complying with all the laws of the Commonwealth and such. Um, also, just wanted to report to the board that we did take on two additional audits this year. We did a financial uh, analysis of our, our software system, the immunity system. So when I started here, um, I was trying to get uh, an idea of how the, how the system works with regard to the town, and we found that there was uh, about 20 years worth of data that's uh, been being uh, updated and, and, and modified, and it looked as if it really needed a good look to see if we are utilizing that software to its fullest potential. Happy to say that we had an audit uh, done by Munis. They've given us some recommendations, of which uh, many of them we are trying to um, comply with now and including a uh, an audit of our role-based security to make sure that everybody within the software system has the right roles to do their jobs we're also looking at uh, ultimately doing a, a, a reversion of the chart of accounts for the for the town so that all of the uh, accounts comply with the Massachusetts Department of Revenue's uh, accounting system um, and that is something that's going on right now we're also upgrading our Muni software system from version 9.4 to version 11.2, which is really exciting, and that is something that the town manager and his staff and the schools is a big working group looking to get out of the, um, the version that we're in that looks like it's going obsolete, and we're going to a new Windows version that's going to have a whole lot of bells and whistles, and we're hoping to add on some employee self-service, some uh, data content management within the system, and really become more efficient with that system. So. That's going well. Um, we also did an audit of the student activity funds in the school with the help of Diane Johnson. Uh, that audit was done by a CPA from Roselle and Clark. They are um, uh, an audit firm that does a lot of work in the Commonwealth and I'm familiar with them through some of my past jobs. So they've come in and done a, an audit of the uh, student activity account. That audit is about to be finalized. I uh, expect that to be ready for you for your next meeting and I will have copies of that for you and certainly have some discussion points as I, I know that there's a lot of stuff in there that would probably be of interest to you and in the, in the town manager, of course. So uh, so with regard to audits, we've had uh, the, the standard audit. I've taken on a couple of addition, additional audits and throughout the fiscal year 17 here, I'll be looking to do some more operational audits and just try to make sure that we're uh, operating as best we could. Um, also, uh, one of the goals of my office uh, as the comptroller is to start to formalize policies and procedures starting to work on uh, draft templates of that and uh, really come up with some uniform policies and procedures that will help um, everybody do their jobs to the best of their ability. We have um, a lot of internal knowledge here and a lot of people who know their job because they've been doing it so long. But what I'd like to see is to really start formalizing these policies and procedures and uh, working with my staff and all the other departments to try to uh, get that going as well. So. Um, so uh, basically, I just wanted to come in and give you a brief update with that. I should have some uh, solid numbers and, and some year-end numbers, hopefully getting close to free cash certification by September, but we're just trying to get through the fiscal year audit, close the books, and then we'll be prepared to start doing our DOR reports for free cash and schedule A and, and getting ready to certify a tax rate. And uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I'm happy to answer any questions. I just wanted to let you know that the uh, job's going well, everything's going well, and, um, and I'm glad to be here, and I thank you all. Uh, Mr. Greeley. So you mentioned previous jobs that you've had, uh, Rich. If you were doing an audit of the leadership of communities, how do we stack up? 
You'd, you'd have an outstanding audit. You would have no findings. Go no further. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Outstanding, I outstanding. believe, is what you said. No, um, what is, uh, um, I knew this at one point, what is our backup? Should we have some sort of a problem with data in the town of Arlington? How do we back up? What's our other, is it called a redundant site? Um, I, I don't know if I could speak too well into it. I know that David Good, uh, the IT director, you, has. Um, yeah, I know that, do you? I don't know our specific plan oh, for this. Okay. I know that we have it on servers, and I know we have backup systems in place, but I, I, I would be uh, lying if I was yeah, no, to no, tell no, you how, okay. how that actually Recently works. Recently switched within the past two, three years, Joe Mixis and Dave Good and all them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. But there is a there is automatic, a, yeah, yes. I was just curious what it was. Thank you. Thank no. you. Joe? Yeah, thank you for the report, Rick. Um, th th this might be a tough question to answer on the spot, but um, in your first year in the job, what's been your biggest surprise? My biggest surprise is probably um, the way the town government works in Arlington versus city government with city council. It's um, a lot more decentralized, I say, I guess. So you, you, you work with a lot more boards and commissions and really trying to yeah. uh, get everyone to synergize and get on the same page as a little bit more challenging, I guess. Not that it's a bad thing, but it's just working with various departments and really trying to get all the information gathered and presented is, is a little more challenging than in uh, my old job where it was a, a CFO or a finance director that kind of orchestrated all the, the financial systems in the town. But um, it's just different. And also just town meeting, having one meeting, maybe two a year to take care of the entire business of the, of the town. You know, this is not a small town, it's a relatively big town. So some of that stuff, is, it, it takes some adjusting, but um, again, it's just learning how the, learning how the players all play together and, and getting used to that. But otherwise, it's pretty, it's pretty standard all along the way on how the towns do business. But just the, the form of government, I guess, is the biggest adjustment I have at this point. Yeah. Seems like you've done it pretty well. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you really, very much. I'm really glad to see the report. I'm glad that I was really surprised to see that it was a year. So that's uh, that's a uh, very that's very surprising. But it's one of those things. That's, it's great that uh, that we've hit that milestone. Um, some of the stuff that I I'm really ha glad. Like I like the list of things that you're working on, um, and uh, some of the things I think that we've done really well in the past few years is th doing adding things like the open checkbook and the. Um, the 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 Arlington Visual Budget integration, and so I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing how those expand in the future too. And I think that your office is going to have a huge role in how people can see into what the town is doing, because you talk about like you know like the like Munis upgrades will give us like you know a new window of access depending upon what's going on, and I really look forward to seeing that. Yeah, I think there's a lot of, a lot to um, see with this new rollout of uh, 11.2. There's a lot more. Um, data management you can do on that you can do employee self-service with maybe getting away from pay stubs and, and all kinds of W-2 forms that you can do online. So we're, uh, we're learning as we go, but we have a pretty good team. I know Sandy uh, Pooler and I are really uh, trying to gain a, a good grasp of all the Munis um, abilities and, and, and try to roll them out in the town. So I'm looking forward to it too. Great. Mr. Chapterlain. Thank you, <clears throat> Madam Chair. I just wanted to add, I, I think the, the Comptroller has been very descriptive, but also uh, modest in, in the description of what he's done so far in his first year. Uh, specifically, I know this, go this board has had as a goal for a long time for all of our collection software moving off of ICS and into Munis. And Mr. Visquet working with Sandy Pooler, uh, working with the Treasurer, with Mike Morse, the Deputy Treasurer, that project is moving. Uh, moving after, our, you know, myself and others have we really tried for a long time to get that moving, and it's moving, uh, and it's moving well, and it'll be implemented within the, the next year or so. So I think he's to be commended for his work on that, among the other things that he described tonight. I guess I'm going to say welcome to the Rich Fiscay year-long tour. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I, I do appreciate the depth of information um, that you have provided. Uh, I think everybody on the board is long heard from me um, that I'd like to see more data, more information, more policies and procedures, um, which is one of the things that you do highlight in here. Just a couple of requests on the um, student activity um, agenda item, and I don't know if it would be you, Rich, or if it would be the town manager, Attorney Heim, if along with whenever that is presented to us in September and October, if we could have a copy of that Mass General Law 
71 section 47 yeah is that what it I'll is? Be happy if you could just provide the verbiage so we don't have to look it up um, the other thing is uh, I just want to echo and mirror what the town manager said about Munis you know get you know we have IT on there we have the treasurer's department everybody under the Sun one of the frustrating uh, stumbling blocks for me and unless somebody tells me this has changed and it's nothing any of us have any control over is that um, the school side um, last I checked and I've been trying to stay away from it so I don't, don't get agita um, <clears throat> wasn't availing itself of using Munis I think I'm hopefully hoping that someday we can get to the point um, and I know it's not something the town manager or you Mr. Visquet this comptroller can direct but I think our goal ultimately should be that both town and school are on Munis because it's better to interface and talk back and forth to each other as well as the last point I wanted to highlight where you spoke about three or four bulleted goals and I think the town manager also just spoke about this about coming out um, not only incorporating Munis and reporting strategies and um, making it m more explanation for our employees but also coming out with clear set policy and procedures which would be something that we would also put forth I I am I interpreting that last part where you you highlighted like three or four goals and you said about policy and procedures it, that's what you and, and Mr. Chaplain were just speaking about yeah I, I'm basically just trying to um, formalize all the policies whether they're internal policies on what the warrant process is or what the travel reimbursement policy is mm -hmm. and then of course you got the macro level and hopefully that you have the schools in the town and all the departments utilizing the Munis system so that it is centralized and you know it's, it, it really is going to be um, huge when we get the treasurers to start doing all their uh, cash receipts and all their accounts receivable on there because mm -hmm. uh, not to bore you too much but we manually post every cash receipt and mm -hmm. that just is is it just makes for potential errors, potential. Mm -hmm. You can't see what the collector's balances are on accounts versus the uh, control. So there's, there's a ton of manual stuff that I think that you'll see that it, it will become a, a smoother operation and will certainly be prone to less errors once it's all uh, synergized. So it's, it's important to me, and I'm, and I'm glad that uh, it's starting to take off at, at this time. I don't know how long it's been in the process, but uh, we are going forward. And we also do have two RFPs that we've uh, received the results of to also bring in automated uh, new versions of motor vehicle excise and utility billing, which is your water and sewer. So um, I will say that Munis has uh, put in proposals for both of those, and I think it's the hope that we can get one uh, cohesive financial management accounting system that will uh, deliver everything that, that you're looking for. Yeah. So if either one, one of you two think tanks can come up with an idea on how to get both the town and school side to do that, and especially around the policy and procedures, um, work that you're embarking on now I can just tell you from the legal field that's like one of the best protections for the client the customer citizens of Arlington um, the users employees our town and our school employees as well as our management um, oversight whether it's the comptroller the town manager the treasurer to have clear-cut policies and procedures and some people may say gee it's kind of silly we have with that on a stipend or how I get reimbursed for car travel but in the long run in the way we do business in this day and age it's nothing but a positive and a benefit for everybody because there's no question about you know how you do it there's no question for the employee that doesn't know about it and then doesn't get the benefit and there's no question that um, one service or craft or purchase is pretty being treated differently than another and I think where we have been I think successful um, with virtual town hall, the virtual budget, like the budget. And, as well as town manager and, and, and everything we put up on the website and being so transparent. That's just another step there. So I'm very pleased that I think the town we're hitting it, you know, head on going full force and um, we'll just have to keep beating on the door, knocking politely on the door on the school side to uh, um, have them join us. Uh, and that's me taking advantage of the opportunity. But thank you for being here tonight and look forward to see you with the student activity and the language uh, from that Mass General Law. Uh, with that, uh, do we need a motion to receive? So moved. By Mr. Greeley, seconded by Second. Mr. Dunn. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank, thank you. you. Hey, we'll see you in September.
Uh, now we'll go to recommended vote for a pilot program, Mary Street, Mary Street, Kelwin Manor Traffic Concerns. We have our town manager, Adam Chapterlane. We also have our colleague here, uh, also former chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Jack Hurd. Um, I'll turn it over to Mr. Chapterlane and uh, Mr. Hurd, whichever way you want to. Uh, I don't mind starting. If okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. And we also have Officer Corey Rateau from the Arlington yes. Police Department available to answer any questions that the board might have. So uh, I think this is an issue the board is quite familiar with from uh, many past discussions about managing Lake Street traffic and issues uh, surrounding Lake Street. Uh, more recently, uh, we had Mr. Hurd come before uh, the board to express concern about cut through traffic in Kelvin Manor. Uh, also, almost simultaneously, I had been contacted by residents of Mary Street and actually went out on site to meet with Officer Rateau, uh, Town Engineer Wayne Schwinnard, Highway Superintendent Kurt Kelly, and actually uh, met with a number of neighbors on Mary Street uh, and actually viewed the cut through traffic happening. In follow up to that, Corey had put uh, out a traffic uh, radar sign that did traffic counts that did, uh, did determine that there wasn't necessarily the speeding that residents thought was occurring, but there was a significant volume of traffic in both the afternoon uh, and morning rush hour uh, commutes. So after taking feedback from the citizens, uh, talking with Mr. Hurd a number of times, uh, and then again finally sitting one more time with Corey and Wayne and Kurt, uh, we came up with a recommendation for a pilot program to try for six months establishing uh, complete do not enters. Instead of sort of messing around with no left turn, no right turn in certain areas, putting just uh, do not enter on Wilson Ave, Little John Street, in Homestead Road, for the morning commute from 7 to 9 a.m. and then the afternoon commute of 4 to 7 p.m. Uh, and what we're asking for is this to be a six month pilot period so that the board uh, working through primarily the police department can observe what, what happens. Uh, we can do traffic counts before, uh, the week before on the 7th and 8th. We can do some traffic counts to see what kind of volumes we have in both Kellen Manor and Mary Street and then also monitor during the pilot period uh, see what kind of impacts the residents have. Do we reduce cut through traffic? Uh, are we making it untenable in terms of the wait times that the neighbors who actually live in the neighborhood have to endure to get to their homes? Uh, and what kind of tweaks should there be? Um, one other piece, uh, we do think that the Waze app and other similar apps are actually compounding this problem, that people that might not have known about these cut throughs are now following Waze through these neighborhoods. Uh, Corey has been part through his uh, professional associations, I think was actually part of a, a webinar where the uh, CEO of Waze was talking about this and all the revolutionary benefits that they're creating through Waze. Uh, but he's going to try to be reaching out to people at Waze to see if there is any way that we can help to, um, you know, help us with this process through working with Waze. I don't know if that will be possible. So that said, uh, I think that's the long and short of what we're proposing. Uh, we would look for favorable action from the board tonight, but happy to answer any questions that the board might have. And could I, before my colleagues, could I first ask um, Mr. Hurd if um, you could sort of give us a general synopsis of having lived there, East Arlington activists, and know, and know the issue, and then Officer Rateau, if you could just follow up, just with generalities in terms of um, enforcement and um, data collecting. I'm not asking you to give specifics because you can't commit to anything, plus we don't want to tip our hand. And then take questions from the board. I have one or two, but if we could do Mr. Hurd and Officer Rateau. First, I want to um, thank uh, Adam and Corey, Officer Rateau, for, for their proactive approach to this. This is a problem that's been around for many, many years, probably 10 or 12 years, and it's just escalated with the increase in traffic coming up Lake. And as, as the board probably knows, the uh, Belmont Highlands probably saw a sign up uh, come view. Uh, that'll be in addition to that. But I think this is uh, a great recommendation. It, I like the idea of a trial. You know, we'll see what happens in other areas. Uh, in Kellen Manor, um, we have additional work to do in terms of the, of the cut through the, all the way through the neighborhood. Um, so I, I think this is a great start. And I want to mention that uh, Andy Jacobs is here. He's a resident of Elliott Road, and, um, and Sarah Harris is also here, a resident of Mary Street. So two members of the neighborhood uh, that have experienced this, uh, this daily. And I should mention, it is probably, it's about 300 cars, so it's not, um, you know, it's in that range, 250. I think that we counted, uh, Andy counted about 250. Just in that two hour, two or three hour period, that's cutting through on uh, Elliott, and then 
I think Mary it was about 350. So what that tells me, there's about 100 people that just take the right anyway. Uh, they don't do the loop. So uh, again, I think this is a great um, recommendation, and, and uh, we certainly appreciate it. Um, just speaking, uh, you know, we received the complaints at the uh, police department, and you know, we frequently have officers there in the evenings trying to do enforcement. Uh, it's kind of tough because we have limited resources and we have other traffic complaints and trying to mitigate the cut through traffic. You know, we have officers there, they stop cars. We do at times have problems with uh, some residents living in the area, but have to explain to them that it's not a private way. It's a restriction that applies to everyone. And if we don't enforce it for everyone, then there's no use enforcing it because we'd have to stop every car and say, where do you live? And is this a route to get through there? So it's something that needs to apply to everyone. And part of the reason why we're thinking about switching to the do not enter rather than the no right turns is that I think just visually for an impact, a do not enter is probably a lot more uh, in someone's face that they're gonna take heed to that as opposed to a no right turn. Uh, and also it will eliminate some of this uh, loop around that we found out that the Waze app, which I didn't believe was happening until going out there and seeing it myself firsthand, uh, people just driving around through Calwin Manor. So we already had the Mary Street, then we had Calwin Manor. Uh, putting it do not enter, then that doesn't mean we have, means we won't have to put up no left turn signs coming the other way. So it kind of less signage, you know, more signage can get even more confusing. Uh, in terms of the morning, uh, I do agree with uh, adding that restriction in there. Wasn't aware of it until um, towards the uh, uh, beginning of the school year and a resident did call about it. And then when we were out having our meeting during the uh, daytime, we could see the amount of cars uh, cutting through. And it was a significant number. Uh, again, like people didn't know I had a counter out there, but I did have a counter out there that was counting traffic and the numbers were significant. I mean, in a couple of hour period in the morning, you were looking at about 300 cars going down Mary Street. And believe it or not, in that four to seven period, we were looking at six to 700 cars going down Mary Street, which is a lot for a residential street. So I think this is a good idea to try and uh, curb it. Again, we gotta give the pilot program. I had suggested six months so that we have a chance to observe it you know, through the fall. It might have a little slow off in the winter if it's bad weather or anything like that. Hopefully, if need be, if it's a particularly bad winter, maybe we can ask to extend it a little bit more so we can get a chance to get some post data. But I'll put out actual counters, not my sneaky ones that people don't know that I put out. But you I'll can do both. <laughs> I'll put out actual counters out there so that we can uh, count traffic beforehand. So we kind of have a, a pre-data idea. And then during the course, you know, after we get the signs up, see how that affects it. I, if need be, I can put some counters up in Mary. Uh, we usually don't do much work on private ways, but I think it's a resident problem altogether. So I'm willing to, you know, use the resources in there so we can have as much data as we can. And then uh, see if it's something that works, you know, or if it needs to be tweaked at the end after that six month period. Excellent. Mr. Dunn? Uh, so, I, I, I to very much like the plan. I'm very excited about the fact that it's a trial. I think that that makes a lot of sense. I really like the idea of doing experiments to figure out what's working, and so I think that's fantastic. How will we know, like, whether it worked or whether it didn't? Like, what are we, what are, what are we looking for, like, in both measurements and feedback that would tell us one way or the other? I think definitely just from uh, some pre-data that I had, you know, it, you know, it's not like I had tubes out on the road. But I, I had like a, a radar kind of counter set up there that uh, uh, was hidden. Uh, we can look to see if it decreases traffic. Because I think overall that was a big problem. I mean, the streets that Lake Street is our, our collector roadway. And that's the road that's designed to carry the heavier, heavier volume of traffic, not these little site residential streets. So I think the first thing that we're going to be looking at to see is if we decrease that traffic on the street. And then, I mean, we have to look at the overall picture too. Is it going to have a really negative impact overall in the area. Is it gonna make things worse on Lake Street? Cause we still gotta, you know, see that, look for feedback from the residents. As it stands right now, they shouldn't be making the turns into there anyway. They would still have to go down to Birch Street to make a turn to go back. So we're not adding any extra burden onto them already, but you know, just looking for feedback to see if uh, there's any change that need to be made. Uh, in terms of Kelwin Manor, again, it's private ways still work on a lot more of that on their own. I've advised them on things that they can do because we as a town can't really 
tell them how to enforce their private ways and just advise them the legal ways that they can do it. But um, again, we can look and see. I'm sure that any impact on the volume of people driving through there uh, will be positive for them as well. Okay, thank you. Um, my second thought was just on ways that once you've got enough points, you can be an editor on ways. And so um, if, if I'm sure we can identify somebody in Arlington who, who has enough points on the Arlington list or, or mm. something like that. I might, I'm not sure. <laughs> no, I don't. I've yeah. been slowly reporting, but I'm yeah. not even. Um, Mr. Greeley and then Mr. Kiro. Uh, yes, thank you. So, um, you know, this is an example of, uh, you know, the town at its best, in my opinion, and with three individuals that uh, represent the best of Arlington, Officer Rateau, uh, Jack Hurd, our former colleague here on the Board of Selectmen, and our town manager, working with the residents. Um, uh, this has got to be, in 27 years, my 10th time discussing changes on Lake Street. Uh, I'm looking forward to the six months from today and discussing more uh, as we go forward. But So uh, my question is, what about the residents of Mary Wilson? In other words, you're not saying do not enter except residents. You're saying do not enter. So if I live on Mary Street, what does this mean to me? I don't think it's not going to mean anything different because as it stands right now, other than adding the 7 to 9 in the morning, from 4 to 7, you, if you're coming you north can't. on Lake Street, you're not supposed to enter Homestead, Wilson, or oh, Little John anyway. You right. have to go up to Birch. Right. So any residents who are doing it now are actually creating an illegal turn into the area. So I... I not that any are. No. <laughs> right. But I'm just saying, so that's, it's not making anything different. We're not saying that now you can't make the turn because you weren't supposed to be making the turn beforehand. Right. And, and only, I, only addition is 7 to 9 in the morning. And I, again, with the signage, I think it'll reinforce it to the people who probably look at it and just like do a double look and say, mm -hmm. we'll just go. But I, I um, echo um, Selectman Dunn's point. Uh, I think it's excellent you're doing a six-month test. And We'll see. We'll go from there. Mr. Kerry. Yeah, I, mean, I echo everything everyone said. I, I like the, uh, the pilot approach. As I mentioned the first time this came, I have followed that crazy route on Waze, crazy. so I was familiar with it. And uh, I just wanted to say, I, I doubt you'll get very far with talking to the company on Godspeed, you know, trying to, trying to talk to them on it. But I do think that if you have enough of your neighbors who report at once the signs are up report the road is closed which which i think anybody can report mm -hmm. it is closed yeah. as long as others validate it you might get some traction there as well in addition to the signs the signs are there of course but yeah i'm just hopeful sure. i i'm trying to dig through my paperwork because i was at a transportation safety conference and the ceo i can't remember her name but she did mention she grew up in medford she was there oh. via satellite from europe talking <laughs> to us and i wanted to i specifically was hoping i'd get a chance to ask her a question about lake street because <laughs> i was aware at this time that Waze was causing this trouble but i never got a chance to get in my question as she was only there for a little local time. angle will work yeah <laughs> so but i know I, I somewhere in my notes i have her email address that because they gave it to us so i'm hoping maybe to reach out maybe they might respond or not mm -hmm. But hey, keep pecking away. Some, something we'll get through. Anyone else here who would like to speak to this? Um, does Andy or? Uh, I, mean, I, I can. Um, I'm or you, if you want to come up, sure. sure. Uh, did, did Sarah have her hand up also? Sure. Come on yeah. up, sure. Uh, Andy Jacobs from 2 Elliott Road, which is right there on the corner of Colonial and Elliott. So I tend to see a lot of the traffic issues that come into uh, Kelvin Manor. Um, I, I'm really all for this this uh, this program. Um, I think it's an excellent idea and a good start to uh, to alleviate the uh, potential traffic issues flowing both into Kelwin and into uh, uh, the Mary Street uh, area. <coughs> um, to speak to Waze, uh, Waze application is very much a social media application. Um, it is very much so based on your current positioning and your actual motion. So. Uh, a lot of the traction that you would be able to get by reporting problems or reporting things, unless you're actually higher ranked in the application and actually physically moving in your, your vehicle, uh, you will not gain any traction and, and those will be uh, 
you know, pretty much uh, you know, useless reports, um, and in fact, will degradate your, your standing within the Waze application. Um, but as long as we start reporting that as a do not enter sign, uh, the uh, fact that that information is, or that, uh, that through way is now a do not enter, that's something legally that Waze, the Waze application has to be aware of and uh, prevent the traffic, uh, traffic routing. Um, I actually predict what will end up happening is, is that Waze will start to start gathering enough data from traffic that will be flowing into Kel Kelwin Manor, and we will, over time, see traffic starting to flow down Spy Pond Parkway, which I believe I, I'm more than willing to help uh, you know, record that information and, and uh, provide the police department with anything mm -hmm. that they need help with that. Uh, Excellent. But I, I believe that, uh, speaking with Jack, we're trying to make sure that the openings that get you through there are, will not be allowed, except for emergency vehicles. Again, that's something within the private ways, but we're trying to address that also. That's been talked with the fire department and everything. Yeah, and I believe uh, Jack is working on a letter with the fire department in order to uh, uh, block off uh, the end of Princeton. Um, but what that'll be is, is those will be temporary barriers that any emergency vehicle will be able to, to flow through, very similar to the temporary barriers that they put up around uh, 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 elementary schools and, and uh, high schools in order to direct traffic through the, those areas. So, uh, and those will be removable during the winter time. So, but. thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Do, do I have your name right? I'm sorry. Is uh -huh. it Sarah? No, no. Sarah Harris. Okay. So, thank you very much for all the work that's been done um, to alleviate the traffic on Mary Street. I'm one of the frequent complainers, as I'm sure you probably know, Officer Rotel. <laughs> if you record that phone number. <laughs> so, um, I look forward to um, having our neighborhood become safer, and it'll be great for um, the beginning of the school year uh, when kids are trying to walk down Mary Street and get to school safely, and as we progress into winter where it can be a little more treacherous. Um, what Selectman Greeley uh, brought forward is uh, the concern of the neighbors getting into our neighborhood. They do have that loop around through Kelvin right now. <laughs> I don't personally use it because I work at Leahy and I come the opposite direction. Um, so that is one concern. You'll probably get some feedback, but I, I really think that there's too much at stake to not try to do something. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we should go ahead and start with this. There probably will be some phone calls to you guys, but um, I, I think that for the majority of the neighborhood, we understand that there's a safety concern. Personally, I feel safer riding my bike on Mass Ave than I do on Mary Street during mm -hmm. rush hour. So I think that's a... Um, really? You know, it's something to consider. I mean, it, it's really dangerous out there because people are on their phones and um, they're going too fast, but that's another story. But um, I appreciate the work and, and I look forward to um, seeing this go forward. So, okay, Mr. thank Green. you. Yeah, do you mind if I, I'm just curious, uh, not related, but you just mentioned safer on Mass Ave and Mary Street. Do you think it is better on Mass Ave since the reconstruction the bike for bikers? Oh, the bike lane's awesome. Yeah, I love the bike lane. Good. It's yeah. great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, motion by my colleague to accept the six month pilot recommendation as recommended by the town manager in his August 18, 2016 memo by so Mr. Uh, Dunn, seconded Mr. by Dunn. Mr. Greeley. Um, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. Thank you so much for all your work on this. See you all soon, Good I'm work, sure. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. Agenda item three, uh, minutes meeting of uh, meetings, July 18th, 2016, a motion to approve. Are you going one by one? Oh, that's right, consent agenda. And actually, we can't because you and I were not at July 18th. Right. So there's only two of them to vote. Can they? I have It's okay with me. I don't care. <laughs> We but can wait. A, we can hold that one. Why don't we hold it? Yeah, we'll take. We'll move table. Table. Okay, move to table the minutes by Mr. Grayley, seconded by Mr. Kiro. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed. Consent agenda. Request parking restriction waivers on Tough and Foster Streets, 2016-2017 school year. Deanne Benson, head of Leslie Ellis, for approval. Running with Friends 5K signs and timing of signposting. Ken Greenley, President, Arlington Friends of the Council on Aging, request. <coughs> excuse me. Special one-day beer and wine license, September 10th, 2016, at Robbins Memorial Town Hall Auditorium. Jennifer Friedson, Chive Events, request special one-day beer and wine license, September 17, 2016, for third annual Moonlight Beach Party at Arlington Reservoir Beach. 
by Jim Feeney, Interim Director of Recreation. A request special one day beer and wine license September 30th, 2016 at the Smith Museum for Arlington Historical Society wine reception. George Parsons, Arlington Historical Society. Request for a contractor drain layers license, Darling Corporation, 713 Dedham Street in Rentham, Mass. And also appointments of new election workers, Joe Martha Glushko, 619 Summer Street, Democrat Precinct 19. Is there a motion to approve consent agenda by? Approved, moved. Mr. Dunn, seconded by? Second. Mr. Curo, um, is anyone here for any of those events? You can Friends of the Council on Aging, Ken Greenlee. Good to see you. Good to see you all again. Um, we are just requesting, and now that it's been approved, <laughs> uh, three weeks early in advance, this is our main source of publication and fundraising. So we put these signs up around town, and we keep them out of the throughways, but they're pretty well managed. And we put them at the cross streets of the bike path, and you'll see them around town, sometimes on uh, business properties. Uh, sometimes poster size. Uh, we also do a four foot sign at the uh, bike path by kickstand and up by Trader Joe's, which is private property. Um, but we're looking to do that in advance three weeks um, as we have in the past. Uh, we take them down on race day. Um, but I might add that um, three weeks is the race, so everybody has time to get ready. So. <laughs> uh, and Adam. Give me three years <laughs> and I'll walk it. <laughs> I'll, I'll walk it with you. <laughs> And Adam, uh, the bike path, um, we only put them typically up by the bike stop mm -hmm. and a couple of the place, Burns Arena, which we get permission for from Mr. Connolly in the past. Uh, but if that's okay, uh, that's where we usually typically yeah, put them. Exactly. Yeah, okay. And we look forward to seeing you there. Oh, there is one other thing. There is a, a small change. Magnolia Park is closed. Our race used to go to Magnolia and cut through and back up the bike oh. path. We do have a small uh, route change. We go past Magnolia to Thorndike, take a right, and then connect back into the bike path. And we'll adjust that, uh, that footage on the town, end side, uh, town hall side when we start or the finish line. So, so and we have food, music, so come on down. Hope food. to see you there. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. I'm Thank you. Don't go uh, away. Mr. Oh, Mr. Dunn and then Mr. Kiro. The people at home who want to buy tickets and sign up, what do they do? Uh, yes, we have a website. It's friendsarlingtoncoa.org. You can go on there and sign up. Uh, the first 300 get a T-shirt. I apologize I didn't wear the shirt tonight, but uh, you can sign up there. We also have an autographed football from Tom Brady Sr. signed by his son, Tom Brady. You might re recall the name. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have that also that's going to be raffled off at town day. So, but for the race, it'll be uh, registration for the first 300, the t-shirt up until the 4th of September, and then it goes to $30. So, uh, and the proceeds go to senior programs, senior community programs that we sponsor in town. And Thank that we, you. That we promote. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Mr. Carroll, did you? Just for clarification, I just had a question. The jogging path between Spy Pond and Route 2, is that under our jurisdiction? No, we're not at Route 2. We, we come up the bike path, and I think it's... Uh, no, the request for sign locations, Ken, it says uh, jogging path adjacent to Spy Pond and Route 2. It's the path around the far end of the pond, right? No, I, don't, um, I think we did request one sign over there. We've never put them there, so we were going to test that area. Yeah. Yes. It's Mass DOT is actually, that's their path. Mass, mass dot? Yeah. Should we ask them or? Couldn't hurt. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if it's up yet. Uh, I think uh, Bob McGinnis asked and I guess we'll talk. Yeah. Could maybe, talk. maybe just letting them know. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And that's safe. It's already up. Leave it up and then send the request in. And if they have any objections, I'm sure you'll honor them. And we absolutely don't. I'm sure that, but, but that's a good point. I did, was, oh, didn't realize that. Up. Uh, anyone else here for consent agenda? Any other comments? If not, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Carroll. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Agenda item 11 a request Thank for. You. Good Thank to see you. You're welcome, Ken. A request common victualler and all alcohol licenses, W and C Restaurant Corp doing business as duet at 190-192 Mass Ave. Cyril A. Guet and Wayne A. Dupre. I apologize if I didn't get close or anything. Um, welcome, and I see you have learned counsel with you. Yeah, I was trying to fix the microphone. Good evening. I'm here with um, Wayne Dupre and Cyril Kouet 
French name, I have trouble with that one. They're seeking to take over the flower restaurant space. Um, and as soon as we get the licensing approval, they'll be in there to do that. They both have extensive restaurant experience, both the management and as chefs. And they're looking forward to working in Arlington. We've submitted the entire package. If you have any questions about it, we'll gladly answer them. Um, and we'll throw it over to you guys. Any questions? And I see Carla Dorado here, but yeah. <laughs> Mr. Dunn. Uh, so I was reading, and I, I don't have it right in front of me, so I'm going to go from memory. But one of your resumes was Boston, London, Beijing, Arlington. Well, Hawaii. Yeah. I went to Hawaii. Yeah. Hawaii. Yeah. Come on up. And, yeah, well, congratulations <laughs> on getting to Arlington. Yeah. Come on up, introduce yourself, and tell us about sure. it. Um, so my name is Wayne Dupre. I, I am originally from Massachusetts. I, I grew up in Dracut, um, up north, and I worked actually with Cyril um, together. We worked for about three to four years together uh, down in downtown Boston um, at the Intercontinental Hotel. Um, that's where we met, and that was going back to 2007. Um, but I left, uh, I kind of moved, I grew my career with the Intercontinental Group, and so they took me over to London, so I stayed there for about four years, and then I took on a great opportunity out in Beijing. Um, I was sort of running um, restaurants for, the, for uh, Intercontinental, I was, doing, I was the bar manager there, and I was running a, a fine dining restaurant and a bar for a company called the Shangri-La, well, very much a Chinese hotel group. And the Four Seasons sort of scooped me up in a way and um, brought me down to Hawaii. I was looking for a resort experience at the time have, having, after having worked in several sort of big city properties, um, sort of in the suit and tie, you know, high-end restaurant. Um, scene, so the resort sort of was calling my name, just for a different experience, but I was sort of always looking to return back um, here, actually, to Massachusetts. This is home, um, and so the opportunity kind of came up with Cyril, where we had a potential to um, open a restaurant of our own, and so that's why I'm, I'm here in Arlington. Um, with the companies that I've worked for over the last like, 10 years, um, I've actually closed and reopened about six different restaurants or bars. So um, it's sort of, in, it, in terms of what we're trying to do with, with the flora space, it's something that I've done quite a lot of, and so has actually Surreal. So we feel as though we're in pretty good position to, to do it. So we're really excited. Yeah. Thank you. That is a great story. I'm really excited to see. Uh, I enjoyed flora. It's a beautiful space. I'm really looking forward. Uh, to, to what you've got to do with it. Uh, I do have one cautionary thought for you, which is uh, on the alcohol licenses in, in Arlington. Uh, as I'm, I'm sure you, uh, your attorney has told you, we do like periodic uh, sting checks, you know, to see whether or not you're following the, uh, like not serving people who are underage, checking IDs and stuff like that. And uh, we never have anyone who's trying to break that rule. Like, you know, it's always, like, it's always a mistake when it happens and it's, 99% of the time it's because they didn't have a rigorous training program and somebody new came on, everyone was shorthanded, that new person started, they just threw him into the floor and then the next thing you knew they were serving someone who was 18. So I just wanted to, well, I'm, I've read your policies and I've read the stuff that you're writing up and I think it's great and I'm sure you're gonna be absolutely fantastic for the first six months and for the first year. My cautionary note is put yourselves in the right, put the pro right processes in such that uh, we get to see you and talk to you about all these great things and we don't see you because uh, three years from now you hired someone new and they screwed up. Thank you. And if I could, before I call on Mr. Carroll, just sort of piggyback on that. My family has extensive background in the restaurant industry and I'm not gonna say, um, but they're all throughout the state of Massachusetts and my colleagues are familiar with them, 20, 30 plus. Um, one of the things that um, I'd like to sort of mirror what Mr. Dunn has said is, a lot of times um, policies happen, they're put in place, and then they don't get reviewed again, even for your long-standing employees. And one or two situations that I've been on the board that I've seen where somebody who was there who should have known better, it was a longtime patron where, um, and I, I've seen from my family, I'm not in the restaurant business, I'm on, on the legal side, that 
you know, whether it's whatever you do by design, one, two, three times a year, you just make sure whatever your hierarchy is, that manager or whoever says, yep, I sat down with all these 12 servers, you know, I did it first shift on Tuesday and the second shift on Wednesday, made them sign again just so they know, highlighted if there's anything new. You don't have to do that. I'm just saying, you know, just moving forward on that. Um, just because Arlington, it has been very successful in attracting lots of people um, to their restaurants. Um, and this board, I think, has been, um, I don't want to say generous, but working in a partnership, you know, with restaurants that come in and want to offer a full, full menu, including all alcohol. So just don't want to see you, as Mr. Dunn said, you know, six months, one year down the road, everybody's on their toes, but after that. So I'll, I'll leave it to you how you do your business and structure, you know, your employee review and things like that. It's just if I could pass on words of wisdom, you know, it's one meeting once or twice a year, mm -hmm. 15 minutes before a shift, two or three different days. It's up to you all. But Mr. Kiro? Thank you very much. First, I'd like to move approval subject to all conditions as set forth. By Mr. Kiro, seconded by? Second. Mr. Dunn. Mr. Uh, and um, I want to say thank you for taking over the space also. And uh, sim I was similarly impressed with your CVs and by your proposed menu. I mean, th this is one where I was reading it over the weekend and my wife was trying to read her book and I kept saying, listen to this, listen <laughs> to this. Wow, this sounds good. So uh, we're really looking forward to it. Um, and uh, I actually am um, reassured in many ways by the, your, your long experience as a bars and beverage manager. I look like you were the manager of one of the top 100 bars in the country. I saw that designation in the CV, so uh, I'm, I'm cautiously you know, optimistic Mr. that you, yes. you, you, you know how this, this goes. And I was also um, impressed that your, uh, your compliance policy actually had almost a mini script for the staff. And, and things to ask and ways to actually um, kind of ferret out if somebody's lying or not. So um, thank you very much. I wish you all the best in, in this. We're, we're really looking forward to it. Um, you know, you've picked a vibrant uh, business area, and I think you'll, you'll uh, serve as an important anchor there. Yes. Uh, you know, I was so depressed about Flora closing, but I'm excited about you opening. Uh, but before I vote on these things, I normally require, do you have a sample of either alcohol or food with you this <laughs> evening? <laughs> right here. <laughs> uh, thank you for choosing Arlington, and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any further discussion? If I'm not on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Dunn, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. See you. When's open? Very much. Possibly mid-November if the licensing goes well and we get everything to the state fast. They're going to do a quick ref refresh and a shooting for mid-November. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Marie, did anyone sign up for citizens? Um, just um, Cindy Johnson. She's on the tree removal. That's it. Just one, okay, then I will read the preamble and then um, Citizens Open Forum, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the Open Forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Did you want to? Come up right. Is she here for Richfield she's Road? She's on the agenda. She has, she's here for Oh, are you here for Richfield Road? Yes. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Well, the, Different, different it's item. It's the very next one. I thought Marie said, is there anyone here for Citizens Open Forum? Okay, if not, we'll, we'll now move on to, Sorry. I apologize for that, I miss you. Uh, traffic rules in order, uh, agenda item 12 for approval, red maple tree removal at 58 Richfield Road, and now we'll have Cynthia Johnston. And you can say your name and address for the record. Even. Yes, I'm Cynthia Johnston. I live at 58 Richfield Road. And that's where, I res that's where I reside, that's where I grew up, and went back after college and moved back there 17 years ago to take care of my parents and bought the house from my siblings, and that's where I reside. And that's where the tree is. So um, I've lived in Arlington, as I say, for over 40 years. I manage property in Arlington. I substitute teach in the Arlington Public Schools. And my father was a well-respected builder. He built many houses in Arlington and buildings. And he built this house at 58 Richfield Road. And we moved in in 1963. The town wanted to put a tree in front of the house. 
And my father didn't really want the tree, but they assured him it was a dwarf maple, and it was only going to be about 12 feet tall. Well, it's a big tree. It's in a 22-inch space, as you know, from the curb to the sidewalk. So it has raised the whole sidewalk up. The whole sidewalk is pitched. Can I send you pictures? Sure. Yes, sure. OK, this is picture number one. Depth perception isn't great in pictures, but you can see that the town has had to fill in some gaps. And now there's another big one they need to fill in. The snow comes down, creates black ice in the winter. So that's problem one with it. Um, this, this space, it, it's a hazard for all the children that walk by to Bishop's School and all the many people that walk their dogs and walk on that sidewalk. The roots are going in all directions. They go 35 feet in that direction. So I've had to have Roto-Rooter in almost every two years to ream out the pipe and get the root ball out, to snake out the pipe. So this year on Christmas Day with my four children home and their families, it went, and I've got raw sewerage in my, coming up my shower on my first floor. Can't use the water, get, got them in, had it snaked out, and it didn't work. So I had Borges in, here's the picture. There's the snow on the ground, this was right after Christmas. And uh, so Borges came in and, and fixed it. They got the root ball out, then they had to dig up the sidewalk, and I have their bill here for $5,600 that stating that the cause of this was the pipe was dislodged from the tree roots. So that was, that's going to be a continual problem for me. So after Borges came in, we got that taken care of, but my retaining wall has been cracking. I have a picture showing the tree, when we had the tree hearing the note on it, showing how close it is to my retaining wall. And I keep putting cement in the cracks over the years. Then I wanted to have my driveway fixed. There were all these cracks and bumps in it. So the driveway, the paving company come, came in, and they said, oh, we can't fix that without digging it all up and getting the tree roots out. So they fixed it. And you can see I maintain my property. There's my driveway. These are some of the roots they left for me as a souvenir. So I have their bill here. It's clearly stating that they had to get out tree roots to fix the driveway and put gravel down. They couldn't just coat it or anything. So that was that. And then the other issue is the lichen that's all over the tree that goes over, all over my front steps, my green front steps. This fungus is very slippery when it's, they're wet. And in the, in the wintertime, forget it, I have to put caution tape up. You can't use my front stairs. So. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's it. Right. That's, it. That's, that's all my, my things. Okay. So um, anyway, thank you so much for considering this. I ask for permission to remove the tree, and um, I thank you for hearing me. Thank you. Do you have any questions? We, we may. Um, I don't know if Mr. Chapdelaine or anyone from DPW has anything at this point, or do you want me to take questions from my colleagues? I, I probably best if there's any okay. questions, and then either Mike or I could, could answer any questions you might have. Mr. Dunn. Uh, so I was, um, I read about this, so I, you know, I went out and I checked out the tree, and uh, I, frankly, I think I've had, as I'm a selectman, more dog hearings than I've had tree hearings. And so one of my questions, tree hearings are easier. Um, and so one of my questions was, what's, for myself, was what's the criteria that I'm supposed to be using to decide whether or not the tree uh, needs to, to stay or to go? And uh, I, I had the opportunity to talk to Mike about it a little bit and kick around some things and you know, talk to it over with some neighbors and stuff. And the, what I, the way I came to it to myself was that um, the, the, the biggest, when you, I mean, it is a public tree and it is public property. And if we're going to take the tree down, then we need to maintain the public good in one way or another. And I know that one of the things that uh, that we need to understand is, like, is that you've offered to pay for, to, to have a tree um, 
placed back. Yes. And so in, I think that in that way we can kind of we can maintain the public good and make sure that the good the the public is you know is well served by this change. Then the other question would be. What do the neighbors think? And uh, given that there was a hearing and none of them, and that you know there was the sign on the tree that was uh, like that told people that the hearing was coming, and none of them had an opinion, I'm I'm reasonably persuaded that the neighbors don't care. Clearly, we have at least one family that cares a lot about the tree, and so I'm inclined to you know do what they want, and um, I think that I would be. I'm only I'm I'm definitely in a place where I'm ready to support a motion or even make a motion to. Um, take the tree down, but I do want to understand more clearly what the commitment would be to um, the cost and, uh, and and what donation we'd get, and whether or not there would be a replacement or not for the tree, and what that would look like. So I want—I guess I want to hear those details. I don't know if we should hear them. I want to hear them from Mike, or whether it's from Ms. Johnston or the town manager. But within the, that's where I am on this particular issue. Um, first, Ms. Johnson, do you have any? Um, and then I've Mr. already Braddock. said I would pay for a new tree to be planted and talk to Mike about it. Okay. We could ask Mr. Rademacher. Hi, uh, Mike Rademacher, Director of Public Works. Uh, as part of the hearing process, uh, the town requires two things. One, that the requester pay to remove the tree, and two, pay into our Trees Please Fund so that we can plant replacement trees. So uh, we can use those funds to plant a tree in the area or where we see fit. If there is a suitable area, suitable spot near this existing tree that would be um, a good candidate for a tree, we could do that as part of our planting program. Is it appropriate to set the amount of that donation here? No, we have a set um, policy on oh. what that is. It, uh, this particular hearing came during a period where we were in transition. Currently, um, it's a price per size of yeah. tree, so it's a certain dollar amount per diameter of tree. This particular hearing um, was uh, initiated on an older s system where we would get a flat fee of $250 plus the cost to remove the tree. So that $250, uh, quite honestly, is, um, is adequate to buy uh, a, a decent replacement tree, and then the town can plant that. Um. I move approval to grant permission to remove the tree. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Kiro. I, I just want to say I have lived in like circumstances exactly in terms of the kind of tree. My neighbor across the street, God rest his soul, Diamond Jim Brady, he had the same kind of that wall with the stones. He had the same flooding issues. He had a great I Irish brogue, and he used to say, can't you? And it'd say <laughs> the F word. but knife, spoon, fork, get this tree out of here. It's doing all these things and it couldn't. And God bless his soul, about six, nine months after he passed away, the town came out the same thing. It had the green lime stuff on the outside. It was affecting flooding. It was doing the same thing to the wall. So I'm certainly amenable to um, your request as well as um, I'll leave it between uh, DPW, whether it's Mr. Rademacher, our tree warden, and or if not you, if um, one of the things I just want to make sure is that, um, and I'm not a tree person, but once we plant new trees, saplings, whatever you call it, somebody has to water them. So I don't know if it's the green bag or if it's, a, if it's near your house or a neighbor house. There's that, I think, it's, I think it's like the first year or two as long as you keep it going so it doesn't die. Can't make that a you know, necessary restriction, but I would put that, you know, out there. So, um, but I'm certainly inclined to support this because I've lived across the street from it my whole life with the tree. If you came down Howard Street, you would, well, you won't see it anymore. The tree's gone. But anyway, <laughs> Mr. Kiro. Thank you. Um, I, I think, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to support it. Uh, I'll explain why because I, I think some of us with over the past, this past summer, some of us are a little bit sensitive about removing mature trees from public lands. There's been some controversy in other really? parts of town which are, yeah not under our jurisdiction <laughs> this is under our jurisdiction um i think this might be my first tree hearing mm -hmm. i'm not sure that i've had i've had one yet and so the criteria that i look at are is the tree likely to cause either um you know harm to to life or or property and my, my first impression was well it sounds like it already did cause harm to the property what's what's the likelihood of um further uh, damage, but 
you know, looking at the exhibits that you've given us, especially with, um, I look at the wall and I've, I've seen what happens when a retaining wall goes out. Um, I think I'm, I'm pretty well convinced here, so I'm, I'm happy to support the motion. So thank you for bringing this material with you. Very good presentation. Um, any further discussion? Well, uh, no, Gray? just same thing. I certainly support and thank you for your patience and all you've been through. Um, would the moss on the steps be affected by a tree? Why is the moss on the steps tree related? I'm just, I'm, I'm not an arborist, Mike, I but try. I didn't know uh, that. I don't know it specifically in this case, but if shade can shade. cause, what well, shade and moisture can cause moss to grow. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, if there's no further discussion, a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Carroll. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you. And um, do you need copies of these, Ms. Johnston? Do you need copies of those? I mean, we'd like to retain them. If you would like a copy, if you can just call Mrs. Kropelka tomorrow and she can. Okay. All right. We're just going to keep them since you submitted them. Okay. Next, we'll go to agenda item 13 for approval. Transportation Advisory Committee recommendations. Crosswalk on Warren Street at Wyman and Beacon Street. Scott Smith from the TAC Working Group lead. And then um, we'll start with that. I don't know, I'm not sure if you had a speech. Not, not to both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just the, just uh, the okay. one. Yeah, Scott Smith, Transportation Advisory Committee. Uh, this is uh, one of the intersections on Warren Street at Wyman on one side, Beacon on the other side. Uh, we received a request from a resident earlier this year saying, hey, there are a lot of people crossing here. Uh, how about a crosswalk? And looked back that nine years ago, we, we may recall, we voted to put in crosswalks at Franklin and Ross and also along Warren Street. Uh, so we, one day we went out in evening peak period, really uh, three criteria we think about for crosswalks. First, you know, <clears throat> is it a reasonably safe location for a crosswalk? By this mean, we, we mean we don't want one around a blind curve, we don't want one too near an existing crosswalk or an existing signal. So met that criteria. Is there enough traffic on the streets so that pedestrians would benefit from a marked crosswalk? Well, that's certainly true on Warren Street. And finally, are there enough pedestrians crossing where we tend to put the, uh, put the criteria, we like to see at least 20 per hour to make a crosswalk a priority. And in this case, in one hour, we saw 36 pedestrians, including a number of children, daycare near there. Uh, so on those grounds, uh, meets the criteria and we recommend that a marked crosswalk be installed at this location. Other thing that we observed, now there's o already a bylaw that prohibits parking within 20 feet of a corner. Often not observed. Uh, I saw some near misses, it's a tough visibility intersection, so along with the crosswalk we're re requesting that a no parking here at a corner sign be put on Warren Street eastbound just in advance of the crosswalk to provide a bit better visibility. Mm -hmm. Again, it's just reinforcing an existing bylaw. Okay, so Mr. Greeley? Move approval. Move approval by Mr. Greeley. Second. Seconded by Mr. Carroll. Um, any questions? Just one question. Mr. So Scott, where is the other, where, what, in terms of closer, closer crosswalks, where are they? Just uh, the closest, uh, I think, is at Rawson Road, which is several hundred feet. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Chaptelain? Scott, just one question. On the map, there's a reference to a double utility pole removal to be coordinated with the utility company. Uh, is, is that a prerequisite of an adequate ADA compliant ramp being installed from We'd have to double. We'd have to check with DPW. It's on the side opposite from the crosswalk, so it's not that germane to the crosswalk itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to call it out, given yeah. we we know the history of double poles and yeah. can't sit here tonight. We'd have to go back to DPW yeah, yeah, with that yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, with that caveat, any further questions? A motion by Mr. Greeley, uh, seconded by Mr. Carroll. All those in favor, say aye. Uh, uh, aye. All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. We now Thank have you. no parking from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. sign at 14 to 16 Mill Street. Howard Muse, TAC Chair, Marjorie Morris, also from our Transportation Advisory. 
Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm Howard Muse, Chair of the Transportation Advisory Committee. And this is Marjorie Moore, a member of the committee who served on the Mill Street Working Group. Uh, Jeff Max Hudis was actually the um, working group lead, but he couldn't make tonight's meeting. Uh, there's some history to this that uh, you may be a little bit aware of. Um, as a result of the CVS approval, there was uh, about $50,000 set aside for possible roadway improvements. The TAC looked at this uh, intersection of Mill, Jason, and Mass Ave. Uh, and made a number of recommendations for some lane changes, lane use changes, a uh, few geometric changes, and a change to the traffic signal. And at the time of our recommendation, we also discussed the possibility of removing two parking spaces on Mill Street uh, in front of what is now the High Rock Church uh, occupies that building. Uh, I believe it's uh, 12, 14 to 16 Mill Street. Uh, the uh, town went ahead and implemented all the changes. Uh, we had quite an issue around the traffic signal changes and they were reversed. Uh, but we did not want to do anything with the parking until we saw how things settled out with the changes that were made at the traffic signal. In our original study, we noted that traffic often backed up on Mill Street, sometimes all the way to Summer Street, particularly in the morning peak period and that cars parked in these two spaces uh, blocked other vehicles from reaching the right turn lane, what well, was a right turn lane and is now a through right turn lane uh, at the intersection itself. Uh, we did some, sub now that all the changes are in and things had settled down, we did another set of observations. Uh, at the time we observed there, was no, there were no cars parking there uh, but we did uh, observe how often the queue came back to those parking spaces and beyond them. In the first half of our observations, about half the time the queue came back to those parking spaces. Uh, after that, this was from uh, 7.30 to about 8 o'clock in the morning uh, in early June. Uh, and then f in the latter 15 minutes of that period, the queue always came back to these spaces. Uh, so it's our recommendation to move ahead with putting a restriction on those spaces. No parking between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. on weekday mornings. Uh, the space is restricted to one hour parking uh, between 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. And our recommendation would not change that uh, daytime restriction. So moved. Moved by Mr. Greeley, seconded by... Second. Second. Mr. Dunn, um, I do want to say... Um, that happened to me this morning, by the way. <laughs> no, no kidding. One to go right on Mass Ave, and I couldn't because of those a car parked there with the line backing up illegally, I think. But I'm sorry. sure my colleagues have heard from different people. I want to thank TAC for, for working on this request. The first time I was at a basketball game, and the bowlers who live on Central Street, whose son coaches Arlington High basketball boys varsity team, they live on um, Central Street, and they said, is there any way, you know, when we come out in the morning, we know it's not that many houses on Central and, B and Bacon Street, but because it basically becomes one lane, and because there's so much traffic in the morning coming to the high school, it's, sometimes they said it would take them upwards of seven to 11 minutes, because first you gotta get a good citizen that lets you come out from the traffic coming down mill to go to the high school or summer, and then you gotta get a good citizen that's been waiting all the way from Summer Street. Um, and they had said, couldn't you just get rid of these two parking spaces? I think what the Transportation Advisory Committee has come up with is a, the exact solution that they need, because they, they said it was in the morning. It's that rush of summer coming down mill, high school going into high school. Um, so those were, were two of the residents um, that asked for this that will make their life so much simpler. It, it's still going to be hard to get out, but it might only take them two or three minutes versus, you know. Um, so I do appreciate the, the work you put on this. Initially when they said to me, make it no parking, get rid of the spaces, that made sense to me. But then ex the exact circumstances they highlighted to me, it was the morning time. Just trying to get through. It's basically two crazy rivers that they're trying to cross over, and you've now helped them. Um, uh, any further discussion? Mr. Dunn? I'll have one fewer excuse for being late for my 8 a.m. meetings with the town manager. <laughs> <laughs> well, we apologize for that. 
<laughs> well, there's another reason you could be late that might come under new business that Jack can't take advantage of. I, I'd just like to say thank you. The fourth secretary in the Slotman's office would be very happy every day we deal with it. Yeah. Look how many people you're making here <laughs> with a two-hour restriction. Um, any further discussion on a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Dunn? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those aye. opposed, unanimous vote. Again, our thanks. Thank you very Thank much. You. Another example of excellent work by time. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Appreciate that. Perfect solution. Uh, agenda item 14 for approval, abandonment of easement at 54 Pleasant View Road and Spring Street. Um, I did have the opportunity, uh, along with my colleagues, um, to speak with our town council attorney. Attorney Heim, I don't know if we want to, uh, who couldn't be with us. Yeah, yeah so uh, we, uh, as you've I noted, Madam Chair, the, we, we, we don't have town council here tonight um, due to a, a death in his family that he needed to travel for. Um, however, in regards to this agenda item, I was able to speak to him. This is an agenda item actually that the board has uh, deliberated on in the past. We have Attorney Leone here representing uh, the client or the resident uh, in question. This would really be an official vote releasing the easement at 54 Pleasant View that was already authorized at town meeting earlier this year. And should the board be comfortable doing so, uh, you know, voting this approval subject to uh, receipt of payment for the release of the easement, uh, easement would be fine according to town council. Okay. Attorney Leone, anything you'd like to I add? have the uh, draft deed, which I've gone over with attorney Heim. we both agreed that this is proper and i'll have the check for uh, mr chapelain tomorrow morning my client's going to drop it off and i'll get it down to him by one o'clock so if moved. you approve um, move approval by mr Grayley, seconded by second mr carroll um any further questions if not all those in favor say aye aye, aye. all those opposed unanimous vote can i can can stand up? thank you it doesn't, it doesn't have to be black. No, it's better. Know it's Who's better? That's all we use in court is blue. Is yes. Are you an order? I do. <laughs> Madam Chair, might I uh, request that we, with uh, uh, John's already been here late enough, yes. but. Uh, can we take up item 16 ahead of 15? Yes. Uh, the special town meeting, which he's certainly made us aware of a little faux pas. Yes, vote for special town meeting, October 19, 2016. Um, we originally had noticed this for October 12, 2016, and our Mr. Leone, as in his capacity, I believe, as our town moderator, as well as paying particular attention to dates, uh, pointed out that uh, we might want to rethink October 12th. Um, so I believe conversation was held and the town manager, along with town council, has now put forth October 19th. October 19th. And the primary reason that the board is being asked to vote for this special town meeting or to call the special town meeting is uh, to file an article to fund the actual construction of the expansion of six classrooms at the Thompson School. There may be a number of other items we want to put on uh, specifically in regards to the potential for an ordinance for vacant storefronts and maybe some other um, ways to take advantage of the recently passed municipal modernization bill. We'll spend the next couple weeks figuring out what exactly we want to file, but again, primarily needed to fund the construction of the expansion of the Thompson Elementary School. And October 19th is fine. And I was wondering if uh, our town moderator had um, any comment regarding the switch October 12th to October no, the 19th. 19th is preferable, obviously. Okay, so. Uh, Thank you. I may have a motion by me, Mr. whoever. Greeley, seconded by second. Mr. Dunn, uh, vote for special town meeting, October nineteenth, twenty sixteen, at eight p.m. Correct. Okay, I keep trying to change the time on it. Um, next agenda item seventeen for we, approval. Do we have to vote it? Hang on. Yeah. What? Yeah. Do we have to vote it? We didn't actually vote it. Yeah, thanks. Oh, so. oh my gosh. Uh, any fr uh, okay. motion by Mr. Grayley, seconded by Mr. Carroll. Any further discussion? Mr. Carroll? Yeah, I just want to note that I, uh, I'll i vote it and support it because I, I think we have to get this done, but I, I will be out of town that night. I, I'll just note that with regret. So. Apologize. <laughs> I know I will. Yeah. Now my brain went on autopilot. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. We now have for approval the opening of the special town meeting, war town meeting warrant for October 19th, 2016. 
Would That's one of my colleagues like to read the motion, please? Yes, although this still has October 12th. So, but I, I, we have now amended that, um, or we will amend that to October 19th, 2016. But does a warrant still open at the same time, Marie, August 31st? Oh, it's going to open November, I mean, September the 7th at 8 in the morning and close at 4, which is a Wednesday. September 7th at 8? 7. 7. 7. Seven. Seven. At, at eight. Eight, 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 eight,
I mean, I'm twenty fourth and thirty first. Okay. What do my how do my colleagues feel? What did I just? What about what's wrong with seventeen of October? We're going to do yeah. seventeen. Yeah. Oh, we're doing seventeen. My son's birthday. Okay. And then um, um, agenda item. Do we want to do seventeen twenty four or seventeen thirty one, which would be Halloween? I'm okay with coming in on Halloween, but it I don't. It feels know. weird doing it on Halloween, but. We're not dressing up, but I mean. Oh, I'm, that's cool. We should do that. <laughs> a costume selection <laughs> meeting. No, that's all. I mean, we get, we've got three out of the five Mondays have a, a holiday right. conflict. Right. I, I, I would say we do it for the 31st. So 1731. Okay. Kevin will bring the samples. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'll be the only one that shows up at a costume. <laughs> okay. November uh, 1428. I'm sorry. I'm, oh, sorry. I have, to, I have to do my data entry after I'm assuming, we say Marie, that. you're not going to want to meet on November 7th. I don't really mind the 7th because by then I will have everything in place for the presidential. Oh, you sure? I'd have to be up at 6 o'clock in the morning, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it won't be a long agenda. Okay, so it could be 17, I mean, it could be November 7th and 21st, or it could be November 14th and 28th. Well, we're meeting October 31st. Maybe yeah. we should go to the 14th, two weeks versus one. I agree. Yeah. 14, 28? Yep. My birthday? Your birthday? I, every year I meet on Johnny's birthday and my birthday. So we'll do 14 and 28? Not looking for any gifts, but samples, Mr. Groen. <laughs> Okay. You know, some night, somebody, <laughs> somebody's going to bring something in here and surprise Barbara them. Winnegar, I think, brought something in. And then December, I believe we already have December 19th set. Um, For the selectmen. Yes. Yes. And then, which is a business meeting, but then we go into our year-end meeting. Um, what so date was that? Sorry. The, that's the, the 19th. Thank you. But we need one more meeting, um, I'm guessing. To 5 and 19? Fifth? Yeah. So is the 19th at 6 o'clock? Correct. We usually do that early, right? Correct. And I think we'll stop there. Well, but what do we decide? Because, again, we're meeting on November 28th. So do we really want to meet on the 5th a week later? Is that a week? I feel like November? that's the kind of meeting we can decide then based on, you know, what, what the agenda is if it calls for it. Yeah. I can always move it up one week. Yeah, move it up. That's move when it, move we can hear yeah. everything from the governor and budgets and the yeah. DOR stuff from Viscay should be. Yeah. Yeah. All right, if so 5th and 19th. Correct. Uh, look, well, no. Let me just, I can do, it's fine, but I would just maybe argue for the 12th because uh, the 19th we don't, frankly, get a lot done. Mm -hmm. And so doing the 12th is, it isn't like, yes, it's, it's calling for. an extra week. Yeah, actually, yeah. There, there's good yeah. sense to that. All right, 12, yeah. to nine, 12 and 19th, does that sound? Yeah. Makes and the sense. 19th starting at 6 a.m.? 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Please. Oh, yes. No, it is. I have a depot and I have to be there at 6 a.m. tomorrow. Huh? That's in my head. Already in December, you know that? No, tomorrow morning I have a oh, 6 a.m. Oh, sorry, sorry. At a 9 a.m. today. A lot of fun. Okay, so we're all set with that, and um, Mrs. Kropelko will get that to Mr. Byrne. Um, correspondence received, move receipt by? Mr. Grayley. Mr. Grayley, seconded by? Second. Mr. Kiro, um, any discussion on any items, Mr. Dunn? I just wanted to uh, <laughs> weigh in on the Lake Street one, which I, the, so the author is very concerned with the traffic on Lake Street and how uh, the interaction with Lake Street and the bike path constricts the flow on Lake Street and, I th and increases the uh, weights there for drivers. And I completely agree and I'm very sympathetic to that and I really am looking forward to um, Progress, like moving forward and finding funding for you know, putting a light there. And I'm looking at the town manager just to, to say, you know, it's one of those things that I care about that I think that it'll matter. I, and so I, I encourage us to work with all reasonable speed on that one if, if we can. If there's something I can do to move that along, I'm happy to. I did want to um, quibble with some of the language that the author used and just note that uh, it isn't. Uh, it is not entirely about bikes who are ignoring traffic because I've, this board has heard this story many times and I mean I can repeat it for you any day this year if you'd like it to take a ride with me. It does not matter if we stop at the stop sign, the cars will stop too. And so there's really, and so there's a problem there, we need to fix it, but I don't think it helps to point and fingers and blame bicyclists. 
I can't tell you how many times I've come down Lake Street and I've been behind them and I've been like, why are you stopping? <laughs> there's no pedestrian, there's no bicyclist, and both sides, and I just don't get it. So um, I'll have to echo that. Any other further discussion on correspondence received? If not, <coughs> sorry, a motion by Mr. Grilly, second by Mr. Caro. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, unanimous vote. New business, Mrs. Kropelka? Nothing other than town day. As of today, we have 242 reports, so we're done. Town day. Thanksgiving turkey done. Yes. <laughs> we should have a nice 40th anniversary with, we have a um, nice center stage and town night is going to be spectacular with all the different events. Where would people learn about town day, Marie? Why would they worry about it? Where would they learn <laughs> about it? Learn about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is there a website they should go to? They could walk all over the avenue, the garden. They can go to the town website. He was saying, where can they learn Arlington about ArlingtonMA.gov. <laughs> Thank on, you. Yeah, it's on the website. And then we're doing the map, and hopefully that will be on the website maybe, well, I'd say right after Labor Day. Great. Right after Labor Day. But um, we, we have a lot of interesting people coming in this year. And thanks for the anniversary. So Great. hopefully it will be exciting, and the kids and the adults will like it. And if you can get there Friday night for town night, it's going to be nice. Be on the Okay, and casual summer town manager, Mr. Chaptolini. Casual in face. Uh, I, I have a few items. Um, I believe this is a, since our last, uh, since the board's last meeting, uh, have officially hired an assistant town manager, Jim Feeney. Uh, as the board knows, uh, he's currently both a health compliance officer, longtime health compliance officer with our Health and Human Services Department and is serving currently as the interim recreation director. Um, so he will be starting September 12th as the new assistant town manager. Uh, one of the main uh, priorities for this position, as we've all discussed, is uh, citizen service, citizen response, and really the hallmark uh, of what Jim Feeney has demonstrated since he's been here in Arlington is an ability to work on difficult issues with citizens and I either solve the issue or not solve the issue and still have the resident feeling like they were listened to and served by the town. So I think Jim will bring a lot great. of talent and knowledge and experience, uh, Arlington experience, to the position. Um, That's great. He is, you know, he, Jim, Jim is excellent. Wonderful pair. Um, just today, uh, I also, uh, as the, the board knows, we have uh, made an offer that's been accepted for a new recreation director to replace Joe Conley. Um, we have hired Jonathan Marshall, who is currently the recreation director in Natick. Uh, he completely and totally impressed the interview panel uh, in both rounds, uh, certainly Im impressed me with the level of thoroughness he brought um, to the interview, I've never seen a candidate for any job do so much research about the town, the town's financial processes, the recreational programming. It really blew me away, and it seems to have just the right personality and approach that really will do well to, to try to fill Joe's shoes. I know he, he has big shoes to fill, but um, I think he's the right fit. Moving on from that, I mentioned earlier the Municipal Modernization Act uh, that was passed by the legislature and signed by the governor. This was a long time in the making, proposed by the governor, I believe, over a year ago. That doesn't necessarily have any one gigantic uh, benefit, but a number of very small, uh, excuse me, small but very good benefits for the town. Uh, I'll be analyzing them uh, with various town departments, sort of centralized around myself, Sandy, and Doug Heim. Uh, some of the ones I want to mention, though, are uh, we'll probably be bringing forward a special town meeting, uh, an update and having um, town meeting endorse the way we're going to collect parking revenues and even be able to set up a parking benefit district uh, with the new Arlington Center parking meters, the ability for us as a town to lower speed limits to 25 miles an hour, which is something I know we've had a lot of discussions about, um, along with various other administrative abilities we'll be able to consider. So that's something you'll hear more from me for probably quite a while about. And then lastly, there was a letter placed on the board's uh, desks tonight from Superintendent Bodie. Uh, she wasn't able um, to get this uh, completed to be on tonight's actual agenda, but wanted to make the board aware of it. In order to ease congestion when the construction begins at the Thompson School this year, is requesting that the Purcell Street uh, be limited to one way so that there can be parking on one side, ease congestion for both uh, teachers, 
parents, people in the neighborhood, as well as construction vehicles. But she'll be back before the board on September 12th asking for that. Uh, Officer Rateau is on board with the recommendation, but if you have any questions or concerns, let me know. We can see if we can have a dialogue prepared for September 12th. So we want this as an agenda item on September 12th. Is uh, Dr. Bodie or someone on our staff somehow going to notify the residents of so Purcell Road? She, uh, she sent all the, all the residents uh, a letter dated today, so they'll all be aware of it. Okay. Um, any other things we think we should be doing before I put that on the... September 12th. Okay, so we'll make sure that goes on for September 12th. Uh, Mr. Chapman. That's all, okay. That's all I have. Mr. Gore. So, uh, you know, just uh, sending out the warmest and best wishes for Senator Ken Donnelly. I don't know whether anybody has an update or not. I, I don't. Uh, but was shocked when I was on vacation watching the news and Senator Ken Donnelly was rushed to the hospital. So um, just wish him much you know, health and happiness, so, you know, please God that it's, uh, he's recovering well and all is, I, I understand he's out of town this week uh, on kind of vacation recovering, so that's all I have. That's it, thank you. Mr. Carroll. Uh, thank you, I just, one thing, I just wanted to commend our um, veteran service agent as well as our police and fire departments for uh, last week. I think we all read about uh, Colonel Sparks, who was a Cambridge native who had served in the Korean War and um, was uh, wounded in action and died in a prisoner of war camp at the age of 19, 1951, whose remains were uh, identified. Um, my understanding is that some members of his family are actually uh, married to Arlingtonians, I think to the DeVito family. So some of the, mm -hmm. the ceremony actually took place at um, DeVito and our uh, fire department were out there with one of the biggest American flags I've ever seen flying over Mass Ave. We had the, the police honor guard, and um, the Army actually chose, you know, that location to make the official presentation, the Army Commendation Medal and the uh, Purple Heart to the, um, the family of C Corporal Sparks. And so I, I think that our, you know, Arlington and our small role really helped to honor that Gold Star family in the service of, um, of uh, Corporal Sparks in, in, in an excellent manner. And uh, I just wanted to, you know, thank our our staff for the role that they played as, as well as some of the other private citizens i saw some calls go out to uh, some of the local businesses to come out during the uh, procession also earlier in the week joe i don't know whether you i think all of you probably knew but the jeff made arrangements for all the employees in the town hall to go out it was quite moving believe me he gave us flags that i passed out to everyone and they held banners and people from over the other the um, academy street came and and it was nice to see as they were coming up the avenue, people were stopping across the street, like, you know, veterans or even mother and fathers and little ones had their hands over their heart. It was quite moving, it really was. It was a nice yeah, a lot tribute of, a lot to of them. Work Jeff did a great job organizing the whole thing. And, and I believe, I was, I was talking to uh, Jeff, and, I, I, you know, they're not sure, but it may be one of the, the longest periods of time in which um, someone has gone unidentified and then been subsequently identified through the DNA. Uh, evidence so it was it was quite uh, moving and the, the only sadness is that there aren't many family members left mm. at this point. So. Yeah. Mr. Dunn? I'm sure you're all shocked that I'm going to talk about Minuteman. <laughs> <laughs> um, Minuteman is working towards a ballot question on September 20th and so there is a <coughs> six or a ten town um, ballot committee that's registered here I mean, in each of the towns and uh, I'm working with some of them to do uh, mailings and outreach and stuff like that and so um, I just encourage people to continue to educate themselves and vote in the numbers and with the fervor that we did when we did our uh, debt exclusion and on September 20th get out and vote please and or get your absentee ballot in. Sorry if I've missed this Dan but I, I, yeah. I may have but have we, has it been straightened out that they w originally wanted one polling place? We'll be doing regular polling places. Okay. Okay. The weird thing will be that it is only open for eight hours, and that's set by state law. So it's going to be noon to Twelve eight. To eight. Twelve to eight. Yeah, noon to eight on on the twentieth. Okay. Excuse me, Dan. Yeah. Are they going to? Mm -hmm. We've had several calls. Are they going to send? Is Minute Man going to send out something to all the residents? Because other people have called to see if. Oh, yeah. 
they, you know, with the pros and cons of it. And I said, you know, we've just so they just in the same. So the warrant has to go out, but just in the exact same way, the pros and cons. We don't, we can't legally do it for a debt exclusion. They can't do it in the same. Like it's the exact same thing, in the exact in the exact same way. So people who are curious, I personally would refer to them to Build Arlington's Future, which is the exact same website that we used for uh, the town. You know, debt exclusion because it's got a lot of FAQs about Minuteman and those are still appropriate and correct. Um, so I would definitely steer them that. There's not going to be like a formal pro con published any, but you know, like not by like a government. You're only going to find it from advocate groups like uh, li like the build from the Minuteman group that I'm working with. I said that's what I said. They'll receive a warrant, but I said unless a group send you something but we're not sending no anything. education has got to be by the parties not by the town Set. Um, just three quick things um, one thank you to Dave good and the town manager and whomever else we're getting ACMI oh, big ACMI AC. thank you ACMI that we have our projector our screen for our PowerPoint PowerPoint presentations and the like um, I know I whined about it a lot and other people respectfully requested, so I wanted to highlight that it's here and we're very appreciative. I just wanted to leave <clears throat> with the town manager. Um, I don't know if it's a town IT issue, if it's a school IT issue, but I believe they still quasi um, fall under you. Um, past like three, four weeks, there have been different incidences down in the basement with phones going out which i'm sure you're aware of you know two three four hours and most recently because uh what happened today was um and it happened last week uh because we're athletics double sessions you have to get your medical forms in you have to do your impact testing and then you have to get it logged onto the computer system that you got your physical in you you got your necessary paperwork from the school today was like the deadline i think for impact um, testing statements and once again um, the computer system was down and so it's I mean no big deal um, but it's a big deal when I, you can't have an athlete on the field we did tell them to go home and log on on their own and gave them all the you know what they had to log on to in the password so I don't know if it's just a blip thing if you could just look into that yeah. and just yeah. you know I'm, like I said, it's not a big major thing the other thing which I won't go into great depth on because I know we're all aware of it um, and I believe it's something, I know it's been brought to the selectman's attention, the selectman's office attention, including pitchers as well as um, the town manager. Just uh, if we could look into some activity, possible activity um, on the bike path at um, Mill Street and Water Street, particularly during the morning hours, <clears throat> um, what some would say is a well-intended um, pedestrian um, who may be putting him or herself in harm's way um, um, when appropriate, but I, I'm, being told, and it's also been on the Arlington list, that this is a frequent occurrence now, um, and whatever handle we can get on it and give education, I'd appreciate that. And then the last thing is, Arlington Friends of the Drama starting September 9th, which is a Friday, every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for the following six weeks, we'll be doing the play Arlington Spelling Bee. They're asking for, um, I'll be, Opening night, so I, I'll get to do it wrong first. Um, I guess they asked for participants to come up from the audience, and every night they have someone who's quote unquote a celebrity. So um, be on the lookout because I was contacted and passed it passed everybody's names on. There's a Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday show, and basically they give you the script and you go up and you participate in the spelling bee, and it's just a lot of fun and. Um, I said yes to it, and then after when I thought about it, I'm like, what are you thinking about? But So that starts on Friday, September 9th, and we'll run all the way till the second week in October, and hopefully I will successfully have roped in all of my colleagues by then. I'll be on the 17th. Okay. My son's birthday. Oh, no, September 17th, September not October. 17th. I was going to say, wait, we're in a meeting then. Um, okay, so three, two now and three to go. Um, possibly four. If not, any further discussion of news business, motion to adjourn by... So moved. Mr. Carroll seconded by. Second. Mr. Donald, those favors say aye. All those say aye. no. Aye. Unanimous aye. vote. Thank you very much. Good night, Arlington.